More than one year after the Bolt Creek fire burned and shut down a part of Highway 2, a new natural disaster now looms and researchers are trying to figure out exactly when this might hit. It's a problem that stems after a fire when heavy rain hits the burn scar during even a modest rainstorm, all that water that used to be soaked into the ground now um, slides and runs off. So it's kind of like it's on a slip and slide. But the problem Washington Department of Natural Resources, Kate Mickelson and her team are asking right now is when are debris flows most likely to happen after a fire? When it rains, scientists look at the slope of the land and how severe a fire burned to give the debris flow risk a rating. But there's one key problem here. That modeling was developed and tested for Southern California, which is very different than our climate, vegetation, and geology up here in the Pacific Northwest. So they're now trying to redefine that metric. Their analysis showing that within the Northwest, specific regions differ from each other, like the different sides of the Cascades. We're not seeing events in those fires until four to five years after the fire. Um, whereas on the eastern side, um, we see those, you know, during the fire or in the first couple of years after the fire. Um, these west side fires um, may not be at their highest risk until years four, five, six, seven. And now they're collecting data to figure out the timeline. We're trying to right now answer two fundamental questions. How much rainfall does it take to trigger debris flows in these burn scars? And how long are these areas at risk following the fire? They're using two tools that are key in finding answers. The first, weather stations. This one in the Bolt Creek burn scar is one of three installed about a year ago. Previously, rainfall data had to be manually collected. Now they can see exactly how much rain falls and when. So we really need not only the rainfall, but the, we need to correlate the time of the event to see get that exact rainfall. The second is up in the mountains. Kate and her team hike into the burn scar following this stream, which is a likely place for a debris flow to occur then find the perfect place to mount a camera. So now if this area were to have a debris flow, this camera would document exactly when it happened. That's a huge puzzle beat. Um, normally we know the day and then if it occurred in the morning or the afternoon, and then we kind of have to guess based on the rainfall data when we think it occurred. These eliminate that guessing completely. Since 2021, DNR has cataloged 119 debris flows on nine different burn scars in the state. One in eastern Washington on the Cedar Creek burn scar. Their newly installed cameras there capturing the chaos. We have photos from before and after the event um, and just seeing uh, the wall of water and material go so quickly is really impressive. In western Washington, there's a need to fine tune these metrics because the Bolt Creek's burn scar is above towns like Grotto, Bering and Skykomish. And also Highway 2. Bering resident Eric Skavarch remembers staying behind to protect his home from the fire and the problems after the highway shut down. People had to drive all the way to I-90 and around four or five hours with with their kids at school here and stuck up in sky. So WashDOT is working to prevent another highway closure. Debris flows are channelized, so they usually will follow an existing channel. So this is how we predicted that it's possible that it could come down here. Transportation engineer Caitlin Card shows where WashDOT is installing fencing along the highway. Spots they say are at the highest risk for road impacts if a debris flow should happen. So that'll be able to catch any large debris that comes down in a debris flow and allow just this water to pass. If larger debris were to come down, it could clog up the culvert and then become it to be overwhelmed and then we'd have water on the highway. This is preventative. While DNR continues to monitor nearby burn scars, using these new tools to collect data now that will help them in the future. I'm excited to see what the next decade brings and how many answers that we're able to solve. For Environment Northwest, I'm meteorologist Leah Pizzetti.